Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Over the past few years, optimization has been one of the hottest topics in the Unreal Engine community. And honestly, it's not hard to see why. With so many developers experimenting with the features like Lumen, Nanite, Virtual Shadow Maps, trying to reach that 60 FPS has been a real challenge. I mean, a lot of people are still scratching their heads, wondering how to balance visual quality with performance without completely melting their GPU. You know, it all comes down to dynamic global illumination. The options are supported surprisingly limited. Lumen is powerful, but sure, it definitely does have its own issues. And the Lumen alternatives are very few and far between. Uh, there was one contender, though, that everyone had their eye on, which was the NVIDIA RTX GI branch of Unreal Engine, which became available back in the 5.0 days. So the talented folks over at Embark Studios actually took this NVIDIA-powered branch and built on top of it using their own custom version of Unreal Engine for games like the Finals and Arc Raiders. And the results speak for themselves. I mean, they have beautiful lighting, impressive performance, but unfortunately, these custom Unreal Engine versions aren't released to the public, so we don't have access to it. But what's the next best option for anyone else? Well, thankfully, the community has stepped in and created its own custom branch, a new custom Unreal Engine 5 fork called the Vite fork, which has been created with one clear goal in mind, to push performance and visual quality further than Epic's current target allow. And if you guys are new here to the channel, my name is Smart Polly. I make all sorts of Unreal Engine news and content. And if you guys are interested in learning Unreal Engine for game development, I've got some exciting news for you. My Unreal Engine 5 multiplayer survival game course bundle now has a 25% off limited time sale. To commemorate the launch of Unreal Engine 5.7, we're having a special 25% off discount. So use code Unreal57 at checkout when you purchase the survival game course bundle. Get access to over 100 hours of learning content between both courses included in the single bundle and kickstart your game development journey today. So check it out link in the description below or head over to my website smartpoly.teachable.com to learn more. And with all that out of the way, let's get right into the video. So this custom Unreal Engine 4 called the Vite Fork has this one clear goal which is to push the performance and visual quality further than Epic's current target allow. Now, Epic's Unreal Engine 5.6, currently they aim for 60 FPS at native 1080p on a PS5, but to get there, it sacrifices stability and overall image quality. And with hardware like Nintendo Switch, which, you know, the console is expected to last seven to eight years. And of course, we have things like the rumored PS6 handheld, which has apparently worse performance. You know, those targets aren't realistic anymore. So this new UE5 fork, the Vite fork, is based on the NVRTX 5.0 branch, which brings a whole suite of rendering improvements, integrating fully ray trace global illumination support, even integrating things like NVIDIA physics, making its future seem very similar to the custom UE5 build Embark launched with the finals. And in test scenes, they've tested that the RTX GI slash you know, DDGI can hit nearly double the frame rate of Lumen and it runs even great on AMD hardware. Now to get access to the fork, I'll leave a link to it in the description below, but to actually check it out, you'll need to link your Epic Games account to your GitHub account. So if you open this up, if you click on the link in the description, if you don't log in to your GitHub account, this is where you're going to see. You're going to see 404. This is not the web page you're looking for. Again, this is because one, you're not signed into GitHub and two, you probably haven't linked your GitHub account to your Epic Games account. So if you never mess around with the Unreal source code, you're going to have to do those steps. And there are guides on how to do that online that you can find. But it's, it's pretty simple. You just go to epicgames.com, you know, log in with your Epic Games account. Then you go to your, your, your linked accounts, then log into your GitHub account. And once you request access to the Unreal Engine source code, then you can get access to the Vite Fork here. So the, here is the Vite Fork, as you can see. This is the official release. You can go ahead and you know, clone, download it as a zip, uh, or you can you know, download it through the desktop, GitHub desktop app, uh, whatever you'd like to do. But here's some more information about the fork. They have a Trello board which shows you know, all of the features that they plan on adding, uh, things like tessellation, stuff like that. But mainly, let's go ahead and actually you know, read some of the information on here. So yeah, here is the UE5 Vite fork. The aim of this engine fork is to offer the most performant Unreal Engine 5 iteration, offering a base performance upgrade of up to 2.5 times real game FPS versus 5.7 intended future set. From my understanding, they're trying to have 2.5 times faster FPS than you know, 5.7, which is a pretty ambitious target. And basically this fork is based off of 
NVRTX 5.0.3, which I made a previous video about, which had several uh, rendering and performance improvements and fixes over Epic's uh, 5.0, which also adds things like DLSS, Reflex, and Improved Denoiser, and encompasses all the ray tracing features. Given that they've also implemented things like NVIDIA physics, and so the UE5, you know, Vite Fork resembles closely the custom UE5 build used in games like the finals, uh, featuring both the DDGI and the physics integration. So basically, you know, they're replacing the chaos physics with NVIDIA physics. So if you don't remember, they used it back in, it used to be supported in Unreal Engine 4 that they use NVIDIA physics, but now in Unreal Engine 5, they moved completely to uh, chaos. So it's actually much faster to use, I guess, NVIDIA physics according uh, to their tests. So here are some of the killer features of this fork. They have the star of this fork, which is the DDGI, the uh, ray trace global illumination, which is a alternative to lumen. It provides higher quality bounce lighting and, you know, way better results than lumen. So here are some different screenshots over here. And this is from a demo. You can actually download this. We're going to check this out later on in the video. We're going to play through the demo here. As you can see, this image, we have 680 FPS on a RTX 4080S in 1440p native DDGI dynamic. So this is dynamic global illumination on a RTX 4080. And they're getting, you know, almost 700 FPS uh, from the screenshot. And then they have a lower end uh, AMD GPU over here, they're getting about 240 FPS uh, at 1080p native uh, with dynamic uh, GI. So here are some other different features. They have improved SSGI, so screen space global illumination, experience both quality and performance regressions into in UE5 due to its integration with Lumen. So they're restoring this rendering feature with robustness and efficiency it had in UE4. Of course, again, the physics uh, integration. Since physics was still supported in Unreal Engine 5 Early Access 2, its code remained available in 5.0, making it straightforward and safely to port and restore its functionality. So since they restored that uh, in this fork, and physics outperforms chaos by 25% per each query process. And on body simulation, it outperforms chaos by two times the CPU time. So they've done a couple of different tests. You can see the chaos physics in Unreal Engine 5.6 is 70 FPS with this test versus the physics in the Vite Fork is 148 FPS, which is two times the end game uh, frame rate. So you can see they've done a couple of different tests here. And then of course they have the RTX DI, which is the uh, direct illumination, I'm pretty sure, which is sort of like a, you know, alternative to mega lights. So you can have a bunch of different lights in your scene. Of course, that also is another feature of the RTX uh, branch, the NVRTX branch. Of course, they also have Apex Destruction, which is a system of physics. Uh, so instead of Chaos Destruction, they're using the old Apex Destruction. They also have Tessellation. They don't have a screenshot for this, but they have a separate uh, branch of this fork that has a experimental Tessellation system. So they removed Tessellation on religion uh, five and instead went to like nanite displacement. And so in this case, they're bringing that back. There's a bunch of other things and other features and optimizations. Uh, on top of the release branch, this fork currently brings the following. So we have the physics 3.4 integration back into the engine and the same functionality and integration as in uh, 4.27. Uh, it has some rendering updates and optimizations far beyond what NVRTX 5.0 originally offered. So uh, what he's talking about here is he actually optimized some of the NVRTX uh, GI code. So it runs much faster than the you know branch that you can download from NVIDIA and a lot of other uh, different implementations and currently work in progress. They are working on a couple of other things like tessellation. So this is the work in progress branch over here. They can go ahead and check out. So this is like experimental where they integrated tessellation back. Uh, they have other different things like options to disable the uh, tone mapper through a setting in the project settings. And, you know, there's some just other general questions like why use NVRTX 5.0 as a base? You know, why not update it? They're using it as their base because it represents the last and best Unreal Engine iteration featuring a agnostic ray tracing pipeline. So closer in design, which is found in other AAA engines, uh, beginning with version 5.1, the rendering pipeline, particularly the ray tracing path, became increasingly intertwined with Lumen, uh, Nanite virtual shadow maps, and temporal super resolution or TSR, uh, making it you know obviously much harder for them to port. So that's why they're supporting the 5.0.3 and also other versions like 5.1. 
Uh, basically, they're listing some of the other issues with the later versions of the engines. Things like you know overall memory usage is much higher. So in our comparison, our fork uses approximately 950 megabytes less memory on average than a scene in 5.6. Okay, skeletal meshes became more complex around 5.3 to 5.4. The base cost of skeletal mesh in 5.0 is lighter. Basically, 5.0 is like closer to Unreal Engine 4 than it is to you know current version of the engine. So over here you can see these are some instructions on how to set it up. So you have to go in and download Visual Studio 2019 and uh, go through all the different settings. So I'll need to make a separate video uh, showcasing some of this. And of course they have stuff like, I can't go back, I'm running my project on Unreal Engine version 5.1 plus. So you can use this little tool, the asset downgrader. So this will downgrade your project or your assets from 5.7 all the way back to 5.0. And then of course they have some tech demos, which we're gonna check out here. Okay, so here are one of the demos uh, that you can actually download from their Discord server. And I'm running this in like 4K. So I got this uh, maximized like full screen on my uh, 4K monitor, but I'm getting around 700 FPS, the top there with a peak of 800 which is kind of weird. Maybe it's like I have some background applications running or something because uh, I was getting around like a thousand FPS because I'm running this on the RTX you know, 4090. But I mean, still, this is the dynamic uh, global illumination, the ray trace global illumination. And they made a ton of optimizations in the scene in order to get it to run super well. And also they have a build for the Steam Deck, which I'll have to show which has static GI enabled on it. So it runs a lot better. It runs at like 100 FPS on the Steam Deck, which is pretty crazy. But yeah, this is just one of the demos. So if you guys want to download this, you can go join their Discord server and check it out. But this one runs pretty well on low-end hardware. So, you know, you could run this on, on your old GPU, your old laptop, and it's still good over 60 FPS at native resolution. So this is, you know, native resolution, no upscalers or anything like that. It does not have any anti-aliasing, so you'll notice that there's a lot of sharp edges, but overall pretty good performance. So yeah, here is the footage of me running it on the Steam Deck. So as you can see, it sits around like 90 FPS and it can jump up 200 frames. And this is the RTX static. So for some reason they got rid of the clouds, I guess, in this scene. But yeah, as you can see, it's pretty good performance. And the display on the Steam Deck, I think maxes at like 90 hertz, so you, you could cap the FPS out at 90 and you won't see any changes or any differences. But yeah, that is pretty much the Vite Studio Custom UE5 fork. I'm gonna make a separate video actually checking out the fork after, of course, I build it and you know get it installed on my PC. And I'll also have to make a tutorial on how to set it all up. But yeah, if you guys wanna start messing around with some of the demos and just you know check out some of the performance, uh, you can download the demo from their Discord server. But yeah, I'm interested to know you guys' thoughts on this down in the comments down below. Is this enough amount of reasons for you to, you know, switch down to Unreal Engine 5.0.3 to build your own game or project? Is there enough demand for this, you know? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments down below. And that's pretty much it for this video. So hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one.